May 23rd, 2019. Uh, we'll start with the roll call. Uh, Jason Greenlee? Here. Uh, Joseph Carroll? Present. Charlie Andreessen? Here. Judith Cavallero? Present. Paul Rodriguez? Here. And I'm Ben Viola, uh, filling in for Nick Rico, who couldn't make it tonight. So, approval of minutes for the April 25th, 2019 workshop. Move approval. Second. Any corrections? I made one small correction on the time with Wendy earlier, so we're all set. Uh, all in favor of approval? One abstention. Uh, move approval of the, I mean, <laughs> approval of the May 25th, 2019 regular monthly meeting. Move approval. Second. Second. I'll give it to Paul. It's a good race, though. Any, any corrections or comments? And we'll move on to the superintendent's operations report. A copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of April is included in your packet. Our average flow uh, for the month was 1.6 million gallons a day. Our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits. Uh, we averaged 93 percent uh, biochemical oxygen demand removal and 98 percent total suspended solids removal uh, for uh, effluent concentrations of 12 and 4 milligrams per liter. Copy of the pump station flows has also included your packet for the month of April. Uh, there were several anom anomalies and as noted on the uh, flow report the causes were, uh, were identified and corrected. Um, most of them due to either power outages or PLC failures, uh, which had no impact in the operation of the pump, uh, the pump stations. Uh, we had the uh, driveway at the treatment plant. Um, uh, the cracks, uh, there are a significant number of cracks in the pavement that we had budgeted to have sealed this year, and that was completed, and uh, we just recently um, had the uh, lines repainted in the in the driveway that's that had gotten very th thin. Knowles um, has completed uh, uh, painting with epoxy, epoxy coating two of our pump stations uh, that we uh, budget for each year. Typically, what we do is uh, we pick two stations and paint the floor and up usually six inches to a foot that tends to be the area that gets uh, where the wear and tear shows so that that keeps us ahead of any issues and um, we had a crack uh, in a sewer service at 29 black point road it's the um, uh, that was discovered as a result of a backup uh, roots had migrated through the crack and caused uh, a blockage and the crack was right on the line between the right of way and the property and we take uh, ownership of what's in the in the right of way and the homeowners are, or the uh, property owners are responsible for what's on their property um, is uh, right on the line so we actually end up splitting the cost with the town who was actually the owner of the property uh, myself and uh, mr rico attended a training uh, this uh, past week at Portland Water District on a uh, data management software. And uh, finally, um, we had uh, the treatment plant was inspected by the fire department uh, for compliance to all their fire codes. And they, uh, we, we had no issues with any of those inspections at any of our buildings. Uh, that's all I have. Any questions for the superintendent? Okay. So we'll move on to correspondence. Um, it's 
Scarborough Downs Innovation District uh, has requested I provide Goro Palmer with the attached ability to serve letter for the proposed 55 lot <coughs> subdivision as described in their submittal documents. Um, DP, uh, last month I reported that we applied for a uh, SRF um, application for uh, uh, some funding from DEP for our fixed asset um, uh, work uh, development of our program. And I gave you a copy of the letter stating that uh, they had insufficient funds uh, to provide the district, so we didn't, we didn't qualify for, for that program. It, it, it was... Um, and then finally, there, I, I attached a copy of the incident report we had with regards to the force main break we had on Gorham Road, the uh, main DEP non-compliance discharge incident report. And as noted the, uh, in the report, the cause of the break was due to a corroded fitting on the force main, and uh, that was used as a pre during a previous repair of that, that force main. And in the report, I included a picture of that fitting, which shows the corrosion um, and the fittings that we replaced uh, did the repair with. We, and we ended up wrapping everything in, in, uh, in plastic to, for additional protection. That's what I have for correspondence. I had a question on the fixed asset SRF application. Mm -hmm. Are we going forward with something with Underwood Engineering or is that just stops now? Uh, we are going forward, not necessarily with Underwood Engineering. That was, I, I can't even remember who, uh, what engineering firm uh, s did the cemental for, but it wasn't Underwood. Was it? Wasn't? No. no. Um, and uh, we didn't have a contract with them. So, but no, we we're going forward with a fix, uh, help uh, further developing of that program. Okay. I was just trying to get some money to help fund it. Sure. Any other comments on correspondence? I just have a question. On the SRF funding application, mm -hmm. was there any clarification given as to what the, what the criteria are for determining the financial assistance needs of various applicants? How do they, how do they <coughs> rate the applicants? Um, combination of available funds and reserves, uh, rates as compared to mean income, and uh, there was another item in there, and I can't remember. What it was. So, I guess my I guess my question is: Do we is there hope that we would qualify for such assistance in the future, or are we just out of the ballpark with what their criteria are? We're we're on the upper echelons of not qualifying because the facilities are run well. We have so the rates are good. So uh, there's numerous <coughs> places yeah. ahead of us in the world. Okay. that have uh, higher needs, more needs, and less financial means, which I guess is a good thing on that. So if we mismanage more, we, 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 <laughs> exactly. we'll be better off. Thank you. Yep. Any other comments, questions? I guess we'll move on to whole business. Whole business. <coughs> um, we received the results of our PFAS sampling event of our sludge. Um, the PFBS and the PFOA were both below DEP uh, screening limits, as shown on the attached analysis report. The PFOS results were above the screening limit, but within the range what other facilities are finding. Uh, Casella, who is composting our sludge, has received a one-year authorization to, to distribute compost. Um, and the, the, uh, there's a new committee out, a uh, PFAS task force, that's um, working very diligently to try to um, uh, get their arms around PFAS and what the limits should be. And, you know, uh, so th this is all unfolding. And, what it really means, I don't know at this point. Yeah. Could, could I just ask that you would give like a sort of a layman's explanation of this just for people sure. who are viewing in, in the audience? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> PFAS, PFOS, and the PFBS is uh, actually there was an article in the paper today on. Oh, really? uh, today? Uh, yeah, today's I, paper. I missed it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, 
and I can't remember, I think it was in the local section. And they are, they were identified in the paper, I believe, as everlasting chemicals. They're the same chemicals that are used on your Teflon pans. Uh, they're used on Gore-Tex jackets, Scotch Guard. Uh, they've been in use since the 40s, uh, hence the various acronyms uh, as the chemical has developed and morphed in time. Uh, it's even used in uh, makeup. Um, and there was a, uh, um, so there was a, uh, a farmer down in, I believe it was Arundel, that had um, some PFAS had shown up in his milk production um, uh, from his cows. And so it, you know, it, it, brought, it drew attention to it. And the, uh, the state started looking into it, and he did have uh, PFAS in, uh, that was measured in the soils. And he did have uh, biological wastewater sludges placed on his, on his uh, farms, but he also had uh, industrial sludge from a paper mill that did coating with, um, for glossy paper, which used a lot of PFAS in the coating process. So the, th the thought process is that's where the real contamination of his land came from. Uh, but with that, uh, people have now become more aware of the, the uh, chemical and uh, all the treatment plants throughout the state are analyzing their sludges. All composting facilities are analyzing their compost and to determine what the levels are. Uh, that we actually have in our materials, and at this point, they don't even know what, they're trying to figure out what a uh, safe uh, exposure limit would be. Um, uh, so it, it's really a developing, in development right now, and uh, we're all doing the best that we can to figure it out and um, provide the information needed such that we can figure it out. Thanks, Steve. Any other comments on this issue? Seeing none, we'll move on to new business. First new business is executive session for discussion concerning a potential lease of district property pursuant to Title I MRSA Section 4056C. Can I get a motion? Uh, I move that we adjourn, uh, recess to executive session. Uh, to discuss this item and then return. Second. All in favor? No, we're going to leave. You're good. This time we don't. We we have that other room, so we'll be back. Okay. You don't have to go sit.
I thought about bringing the last time. I just saw the last one. I guess you can call me back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys want to take a public comment? I would. Yeah. I think it's better than Henry. Yeah. Talk to the chairman. I don't know. You want to take public comments? Right now, we move public comment down for this since they're all here. Before the. Before the chairman? Before we vote? It would be before we vote. It would be before we vote. I don't think so. Okay, sure, we'll look at that. It'll offer anyone. You all set? Yeah. So moving us back into the uh, regular session. Um, at this point, we'll be willing to take public comments if someone wants to make some comments before we uh, well, have a motion. Do you want me to describe what? Okay. Yeah. Um, back up. Yeah, let's back up a little bit. <laughs> Uh, so, as you all are aware, we have a, an amendment that was put uh, to us uh, from Verizon to our current lease that we, are, uh, we have already in hand. And the new, uh, the amended, uh, the amendment to the lease is um, uh, so essentially solely a uh, relocation of the cell tower location. Uh, to what has been, I think, I, uh, in previous discussions, identified as Site B. Um, so it's, it, it basically is tucked into our corner of our property as close as they can, as far as they can move it, uh, with the 150-foot setbacks. So that's the amendment that we just discussed in an executive session, and that the board as um, will be voting on momentarily. I, I, I did get um, some public comments from maybe some of you that are here um, uh, via email uh, beginning yesterday, I believe, with your brother or sister. Um, and um, so all of the, uh, the emails, which I have distributed via email to the board already, uh, expressed a desire for the uh, board to move forward with an amendment to relocate the uh, the tower as to that site B. Um, so I guess at that point I would yeah. open it for public comment. I'd like to ask a question. Uh, Hi, I'm Marvin Gates, uh, 423 Black Point Road, and. Uh, uh, no such thing as a dumb question, right? The, uh, does the amendment, well, first of all, can we see the amendment? Uh, but second of all, does the amendment give Verizon both options depending on planning board approval? I no. see shaking head. Yeah. No. No, the answer, the answer no. is no. Sorry. It, it, it just, it, it literally is just a relocation, a site relocation, moving it from the original location to this site B using previous terminology. Thank you. <clears throat> you should probably state your name. And sure. Lucy LaCase, 52 Old Neck Road in Scarborough. And I want to thank Dave. Yesterday met me there and we went and we found the stake in the ground. Um, and that site B indeed does seem further into the woods and would certainly provide um, better buffering from the marsh than site A. So um, I urge you to accept the amended lease. Catherine Wise, 588 Black Point Road. I just wanted to state, um, following up on what Lucy said, is I think that the number of people that you see sitting in the first two rows would all um, affirm what Lucy said in terms of asking you to support the amendment um, and using option B. So that please <laughs> count the numbers that are here who are all representative of the desired um, use of the amendment. Thank you. Hi, 
Nina McKee. Nina McKee, can you hear me? Yep. yep. Uh, 509 Black Point Road, number 59. I just want to say this is quite an interesting process. And I think that I want to thank you all for your attention and for your patience and for even being here and being on the committee. You know, it's a lot of time, a lot of effort. And I also hope you'll, you'll really think about moving this hideous thing um, and help, help, help us, really. But thank you all very, very much. to Sanctuary Lane Scarborough. Um, similar uh, notion, comment, won't repeat it all, but uh, location B seems great. Not too clear, though, if, uh, as far as your purview goes, the type of tower is part of the specification, brown stick, et cetera, et cetera. Is that part of the uh, arrangement, or is that a separate thing which goes <coughs> under the planning board? I'm aware of that whole separate process. Um, on typically that is something that we wouldn't address it would be a planning board thing yeah. uh, but they did identify without our input on it that it would be they have proposed um, Verizon wireless 120 foot concealment monopole they, have, they identified it in that manner. concealment monopole yeah. okay and they've given you the height too yes and did they talk anything? Is there anything in the arrangement about a future extension, addition, modification? No. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Appreciate everything you do. A concealment to get up to the, is embedded in town. Can you get up to the mic so that people are in? I just wanted to affirm that a concealment monopole, where there's been so many different language names going around, is indeed a stick with the all antennae embedded within the pole. I don't know. It's as again, it's not something that uh, we would get embedded in. Um, it sounds like it would be. Could maybe Verizon answer that question? They're not here. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's on their site drawing, but there's nothing you know, like, yeah, like the I superintendent think, mentioned. It, it really you falls under the planning, planning board, board purview. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is that it for public comment? We'll close public comment <clears throat> and get back into our regular session. <clears throat> Charlie, you gonna... Mr. Chairman? I'd like to move approval of the first amendment to lease to our land lease agreement uh, dated 27 December 2017 um, and authorize the superintendent to execute the lease. The amendment? The amendment to the lease, yes. Second. Any comments before we take the vote? All in favor? Yes. I assume that what they've given us is what they're in agreement with the planning board to have, and that we won't have to hear this, hear this again. But I would hope so. <laughs> we would hope. I would hope so. Um, so the next item on the agenda is uh, the beacon. Welcome. 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 You know, they, she, she said thank you. Oh. Yeah. You're welcome. You're the Beacon, formerly known as the Residence at Gateway Commons, Phase 2. Okay, we're losing our audience. Um, Don't feel obligated to stay. We won't hear that <laughs> I'll email it to you tomorrow. We're leaving for a decade, sir. <laughs> Touche. Uh, on behalf of KGI Properties, uh, Sebago Technics requested that the Scarborough Sanitary 
Uh, Scarborough Sanitary District Board of Trustees approval of phase two, consisting of the constructing of 48 apartments, units in two buildings, numbers 9,000 and 10,000, and three garage buildings. The design flow for phase two is calculated at 9,600 gallons per day. The beacon uh, is located off of Payne Road in Higus Parkway. On the 26th of October in 2017, Scarborough Sanitary District approved construction of phase one of the proposed apartment complex. At that time, phase one consisted of constructing buildings 1,000 through 10,000, and the remaining two buildings, numbers 11,000 and 12,000, were constructed as part of phase two. In July 26, 2018, the district approved the phasing change as requested within the amendment. Buildings 11,000 and 12,000 uh, would be constructed as part of phase one, and buildings 9,000 and 10,000 uh, would be constructed as part of phase two. Phase one and two would each include the same number of units as previously approved. Uh, I recommend approval of phase two with the following conditions. This phase is fully subject to the capacity reserve fee. Any additional homes, apartments, <coughs> dwelling units, accessory units, or flow in excess of um, this are subject to additional approvals. The current capacity reserve fee is $16.32 a gallon, and it's adjusted monthly based on the ENR. Uh, based on the current fee and 9,600 gallons per day, the total capacity reserve fee due is $156,672. The approved flow for, is for phase two, consisting of 48 residential dwelling units of typical sanitary waste. Any flows in excess of the approved amounts are subject to additional approvals. A sewer permit is required to reach sewer service. Uh, complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no site sewer work shall be completed. Uh, professionally surveyed electronic georeference CAD drawings, stamp PDF CAD drawings, and stamp paper copy to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Uh, with regards to the garages, no sewer service shall be provided to the proposed garages. And all of the other conditions of the October 26, 2017 approval shall remain in place. Motion to approve. Second. Who was, who was that, Joe? Joe, and then me, yep. Any comments, any questions? I just, one quick question. Um, so the ability to serve covered both phases? <coughs> that that's, that's already been approved? That was back in 2017, back. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And I believe they submitted <coughs> the design at that time for the sewer? And uh, I, I don't remember. How, whether it was at the same time or there was a lag in between. I'd have to go back to the project. But we already now. have the yep. design. Yeah. The sewer design is, is, has been accepted and approved and installed, actually. So this is just building the last two buildings on the project. We're not fast. Any other comments, questions? All in favor of approval? Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next item, uh, Scabber Downs, Phase 2, Innovation, Innovation District. Uh, on behalf of Cross uh, Roads Holding, LLC, Goral Palmer requests did the Scarborough Sanitary District Board of Trustees approval of the proposed development, Scarborough Downs, Phase 2, Innovation District. The Innovation District is in the northern portion of the site near Payne Road and proposes a mix of destination retail, commercial business, along with technology, research, manufacturing, and light industrial use. The current proposed development includes 55 new subdivision lots along with a road, parking, driveways, pedestrian access, streets, shared private drives, <coughs> and the site improvements, including a trail network uh, and over 40 acres of open space. The proposed development is as follows, 55 lots, 
42,748 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste, 151 feet of one and a half inch low pressure sewer, 794 feet of two inch low pressure sewer, uh, 225 feet of six inch sanitary, 2,351 feet of eight inch gravity, 691 of 12 inch gravity, 38 of 15 inch gravity and 18 manholes. The proposed sanitary sewer system will flow to a proposed pump station, which is currently under design uh, to be approved in a future phase. The pump station will pump to Higus Parkway and discharge to the gravity sewer that flows directly to pump station number five on Willowdale Road. All of the proposed gravity sewer manholes and sewer services within this request shall be transferred over to the district upon the completion of the project. The road will, roadway will be uh, public. Note that in future phases, the side road servicing the back lots will remain private, but the developer is proposing providing a utility easement for both public water and public sewer. I recommend their approval with <coughs> the following conditions. Uh, wastewater flow be limited to 42,748 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. Uh, the NIL to have the developer shall develop an allocation schedule per lot. Uh, this phase is fully subject to the capacity <coughs> reserve fee. The current capacity reserve fee is uh, $16.32 a gallon, $16.32 a gallon, and adjusted monthly based on the ENR. Based on the current rate, the total capacity reserve fee due is $697,647.36. And additional homes, apartments, dwelling units, accessory units, or flow in excess of this are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. District approval is required for the development of each lot. Uh, CCTV inspection of the installed sewer is required at the completion of the project. Final plans shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to the issuance of the permits. Uh, detectable underground utility marking tape and trace wire. All uh, gravity uh, sewers in Force Main shall be have detectable underground utility marking tape and trace wire in accordance with our standards. Uh, final plan shall be submitted to superintendent for approval prior to the issuance of the permits. A sewer extension permit is required. A completed application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district prior to any sewer extension work. The proposed stumps, pump station shall be approved fully operational and second accepted by the district prior to the acceptance of this phase. And professionally surveyed electronic georeference CAD drawings and stamped PDFs of the CAD drawings and stamped PIP copies be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. And we do have the engineer the firm representing the owner here. Uh, did you have anything to add? Okay. So we get a motion for this? Or? Move approval with the conditions set forth by the superintendent. Second. So, Doug, you get any answer questions? Question. I, one of us can. <laughs> Go ahead, Charlie. Uh, oh, this is for the superintendent. Um, we've got 794 feet of two inch low pressure sewer. Um, 151 feet of one and a half inch low pressure sewer, <clears throat> which is going to be in private access roads. Is that, are those sewers going to be privately owned and maintained? Um, they are proposing a utility easement on, uh, for the, um, those private access roads. Uh, my understanding is Portland Water District is going to own their main, going up those utility easements. They would like us to take ownership of those uh, uh, infrastructure within the private roads. Um, uh, typically, we only take in, uh, ownership of infrastructure that's within the public right of way. That's one of the reasons why I, I call it out. Uh, I know it is an issue. Uh, for the owner, if you would like, they would like the district to take that on. It, although it's not part of this approval at this point in time, it's these uh, sublots. How they get developed is very questionable at this point. Um, 
you can see the, the, the roads uh, either service four or six, four to six um, lots. <clears throat> and they envision that, you know, up to four or six uh, occupants or one, one business could buy all four of them and develop on that one mm -hmm. larger piece. So that they really don't know how it's going to unfold. Yeah. Well, um, I'm a little bit concerned about us having utilities in, in private ways and the potential for future disagreements and conflicts with folks who are responsible for owning or maintaining private ways. Um, if and when repairs have to be made, then you have to deal with the owners with regard to the satisfaction of the repairs that have, that have happened. And, and typically, uh, typically we deal with the town of Scarborough and the town of South, city of South Portland with regard to our repair of their roadways. And we're not dealing with private entities mm -hmm. whom we may know or not know. And as we know, some are reasonable folks and some are not. Um, and I also am not sure with regard to the two inch low pressure sewer, I think that meets our standard, but mm -hmm. one and a half inch pressure sewer, I think we have a, I think we have a standard for pressure sewers that specifies two inch. I would have to confirm that. I did not think that was accurate, but I will, I will certainly check. Okay. Well, I haven't, I honestly haven't read the, yep. haven't read the provision for probably eight or 10 years. So mm -hmm. I may be wrong, but my recollection is that we had, we had specified uh, two inches, the minimum diameter pressure sewer that we'd accept. And I'm not asking them to redesign it because I understand the design is based on the flow that they're putting through it, but I'm just, mm -hmm. at some point, troubleshooting low pressure sewers is going to be a major pain <laughs> when the when the malfunctions happen, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I'm I'm just I guess I'm feeling <clears throat> the need to be a little bit cautious about accepting roads and private streets, and if the one and a half inches less than what we accepted is our, establishes our standard, then I'm not sure it makes sense for us to go mm -hmm. to go that way. Um, but other than that, I have no problems with anything that's, that's been presented. And um, the low pressure sewers, are those treated as force mains with regard to, um, with regard to the location, uh, the burial wire for future yes. location? Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm honored because of um, the plastic pipe is impossible to locate. Yeah. So is all the low pressure sewer in private streets? No. Just, uh, the, just the one and a half inch? Just, uh, just some of the one and a half, uh, not even all of it is uh, the one and a half is in, some of it will be in, in the public. I'm doing, a, I'm reviewing the policy and I actually don't see any reference to a two inch minimum size. Oh, but really? I'll, I'll huh. look at it closer okay. uh, at another time. Questions? Two. Uh, one for the superintendent. Uh, just clarification on item nine as far as the pump station goes. Um, I'm, ex I'm expecting that that, uh, um, so before they can actually use the buildings in this proposal, the pump station will be online. Is that what you're saying here? Uh, online and built to our satisfaction. Okay. Do we know if there's a timetable on when we should see that proposal? They're currently working on it. Uh, they've met with me a, a couple occasions already. Um, start laying it out. So uh, it's just a longer <clears throat> process. So I would suspect, well, that's that. <laughs> well, my next question probably will definitely be uh, uh, leaning more towards them than you. I'm just kind of curious of what, what the difference 
and maybe it's more of an educational point on my part, but uh, why the difference between the one and a half and the two inch sort of low pressure services? Is it difference in occupancy and uses? It's based on flow. Um, okay. as you're trying to maintain a, a certain velocity. And sure, as you get, that part. As you get to the outer reaches where you're only servicing one or two or three lots, um, you know, two-inch force main, your velocities end up being too low and you don't get enough, uh, your, your turnover within the force main is not uh, fast enough and you start getting some hydrogen sulfide production. Appreciate you standing up, though. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. How'd I do? <clears throat> I'm good, thank you. Anyone else? Um, uh, just, just a minor <laughs> thing probably, but um, it seems like there's a different flow number in the ability to serve and in the, in the letter. It's, it's just the I and I. The infiltration allowance is the only difference, but um, in the motion we say 42,748. But the corresponding letter says 43, that's from May. But then the 42,748 is in this version of the letter. So I just, if it was, just wanted to clear it up if there was a snafu there. I didn't want the motion to. I just assumed there was a uh, tweaking of the project between times. There was, um, there was a, uh, some time passed between the two. I'm looking for the original letter. Are you referring back to the ability to serve letter? Yes, he is. Yeah, so the difference is not significant. It's, it's negligible. It's a couple hundred so, gallons. I mean, if it's not an order of magnitude problem, I think I think we covered that just with our actual approval of the superintendent's motion. Okay. Because the, yeah. the ability to serve letter goes out well before we know what the actual final design is going to incorporate. So I think it would be an issue if they were, if they came in at twice that amount. I think I think we'd say time out. But right. A couple hundred awesome. gallons a day, one way or the other. I don't think it matters. Okay. Good. Just wanted to make sure there wasn't, um, you know, an issue with that. Um, another quick one. Um, I noticed in a couple of locations. I understand these are preliminary plans, but mm -hmm. um, there are a couple of areas where. Um, and I'll just note the lots, I guess. Um, lot 4 and 53 are two that I noticed where it looked like the sewer was, was coming in to the, to the main in the road through a Y. Most of the other ones are coming in to, uh, through a manhole, which is what I would expect. And it just, it just which, jumped out at me. Which, which sheet are you on? Sure. Let's, um, so uh, sheet uh, C203, lot Lot four, and it might be that I'm, you know, I, I'm not saying these are preliminary plans, and I might not be reading it properly. Typically, our sewer services do come in with a Y, and on, uh, I think at the other locations, it's just by coincidence and convenience that they're utilizing a manhole. Okay. All right. Um, but yeah, typically, sewer in, in in that case, there to, it, it would more, uh, more than likely be that we would require a what we identify as a sampling manhole uh, at basically at the property line to give us access if we ever need in, need it into the manhole to collect samples. And I did, uh, I did provide them with some marked up drawings, and <clears throat> they have, they have uh, returned them, uh, addressed my concerns. I have, I have to finish going through the, the revision <coughs> to make sure they, ad they address them all. Uh, ben picked up on something, too, that I need to check follow up on. 
So Ben, just two more questions. These are more bigger picture. Um, sure. So I'm curious about the proposed um, pump station, and it looks like a submersible pump station. Is that no? no. Okay, I I misinterpreted that. Then I just saw well and structure next to it, but the intent is for it to be a, a dry well, like our. It'll be a dry well, flooded suction, stairway access. Will these be like vacuum prime pumps? Or? We have been using vacuum prime pumps, but um, I, I'm trying, to, you know, my mechanics would like to get away from them mm -hmm. uh, if we can, uh, because it's one more thing to maintain. Yeah. Um, and so in this case here, I think we can go with flooded suction. Um, and by using the stairway access, we get, ri we get around the um, confined space issues around the pump station. Yeah. And is this coming with emergency power? Yes. Thank you. So I guess, is it a major issue to resolve the question of the private roads, public sewers and private roads? How big a, how big a point of contention is that with you folks? I mean, it seems like, it seems like if we walk away from this without making a decision on it, that at some point in time in the future, somebody's going to be disappointed. It is going to come back. I've made it clear to the applicant that uh, typically our, we don't accept uh, utilities in the, in the private way. Um, and I, had a, I think I had a conversation as recently as Monday about it. Um, so I think we should talk about that. And with that, uh, Dan Bacon here on behalf of uh, M&R Holdings, Crossroad uh, Holdings LLC and the, the Downs. Um, I can speak a bit to the private road, public road uh, approach to the, to the project. Um, the intent is the plan shows below. Um, there's, there's the public road that goes east to west that provides access to a number of lots. Then there's the proposed private roads that um, are actually being designed to public standards in terms of road construction, utility construction. Um, early on in the design effort, we actually were thinking about those being public, um, given the, the construction design approach. Um, but as Dave introduced earlier, the idea of all these lots being an acre and then being able to be combined to accommodate larger users um, provides a fair amount of flexibility and we thought that rather than proposing them all as public and then coming back to the town and shortening public roads and changing the subdivision plan, changing the plans to you, um, we would approach it the other way around where the main street is public and then these be private roads and that they have some flexibility around how they're developed uh, with the understanding of kind of working with the town and the utilities around having that right of way that meets your standard. Um, that's, we talked a lot to, to Dave, but also Fort and Water District where they expected a 50 foot wide right of way so that utilities can be um, properly separated, that there's good access, um, that the roads are built and maintained, again, like a, like a public road would be. Um, so. We've been hoping that that would be the approach with the utilities in that they could all have been proposed as public, but we'd be kind of then creating problems by coming back and changing that plan. <coughs> so um, I think to maybe address concerns with the long term, you know, maintenance and working with Individual, individual lot owners, um, I think we're very open to figuring out the right legal instruments to make sure that that's um, not a challenge in the future. There's going to be an association overall that maintains this whole um, area of the project from a, a plowing, a paving, from a storm, there's going to be uh, stormwater requirements that occur in those private roads that go to the ponds. So there's a lot of kind of layers that already um, have to dictate a, an association that can 
that has to work with the town and the utilities. So we're, we're hoping that we can have a similar arrangement with the sanitary district and have kind of a clean, straightforward process moving forward so that there aren't like the challenges you're, you're raising in terms of working with one property owner or another. Um, when so you how is this association configured? The association is going to um, consist of all of the lot owners in the innovation district. So ultimately it could be <coughs> probably not 55. I think some of these lots will be combined, but um, you know, 40 to 50 kind of lot owners are paying into uh, an association to commonly maintain the stormwater ponds. There's two big ponds that are serving this area to commonly maintaining some of the landscaping that's, that's um, within the project, the sidewalk along Innovation Way, um, and the private road surfaces, those access drives. Um, so that's gonna include annual maintenance, but also kind of longer term maintenance. So, so the original developers eventually will be not in, included in that the, it's, I mean, somewhat similar to, say, a condominium association. Um, there's the associate, the original developers also are gonna own property within this area of the project, um, but ultimately- Won't control the association. They're not association. gonna control the association will. Um, so I go back to my nightmare of private sewer system owned and operated by homeowners association we get called from the homeowner on street X because there's a backup of his sewer and we go down and find out that the pump station has been turned off because the association hasn't paid CMP the power bills. And uh, it's not our fault because it's a private sewer and in private streets and the association itself didn't perform its maintenance, but they're blaming us because they have a problem, which turns out to be their problem because they never paid their sewer bills because the person who was running the association had no clue what the sewer bill was for. So I'm just, I'm just saying there's all kinds of issues with dealing with private homeowner associations or condominium associations or whatever that come up and are problematic for us and can cause more friction than they can goodwill, I guess, down the road. And I'm, I'm pretty concerned about that with the development of this size um, with what I would anticipate would be pretty significant, um, pretty significant investors owning and developing these properties. And with, with the developers now out of the picture, we're dealing with folks who may or may not have a reasonable perspective on what it is that we're providing for service. So I'm not sure that we really, I'm not sure that we really belong in there in that in that scenario. I, I don't know. I have I have concerns about that. So point of clarification, the the project is asking us to own the sewer while it's still a private way, or just to approve them while they retain it as a private way, built to our standards. And then when they turn it over, then eventually turn it over to the town. Not going to no. be turned over to the no. town. The, it's the, a private. They want to, they want us to own the sewers in the private. They want us to be responsible for the operation and maintenance of the sewers in the private way. The roads that are going north south on the plan. Too. Right. I just assumed that you were talking about turning the roads over entirely to the town. No. Okay. Um, and the pump station is going to be private. No, the pump station. The pump station and the, the the sewer in Innovation Way, which is the road going east west, will be ours. Will be ours. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll be public. We'll want a private pump and station. That road will be public. Okay. So Dan, my question is, how big a deal is it? How big a deal is it to the project if the sewers in the private ways remain private and, and sewer, managed? The sewer lines. Right? Yeah. Right. If those um, remain under the control of the association, it's been a fairly big deal in terms of how they're approaching um, those those private drives. Uh, I'd have to go back and talk to them about whether those perhaps are going to be public when all four or six lots are built. Um, I don't 
think it's a big deal if it's serving one or two lots. I think when you're getting up to um, serving four or six lots, they've been, you know, we're, one of the concerns has been running individual lines from individual services from the public main up to six lots and fitting that in is, you know, the, sort of the practicality of doing that um, and fitting that in these 50-foot wide right-of-ways. Um, are, are, are we looking at gravity sewers in these roads? Uh, the, the, the last two private ways, the, the H on the end, yep. uh, those would be pressure sewer, I believe. That's my right. recollection. Kind of, we're to a degree caught between <laughs> uh, the town's expectations and the utility companies, in that um, you know we're trying to be not design public streets that aren't all going to be ultimately public, because um, that's where we could have gone initially. Is all the side streets could be public, and then you'd be more you'd be more comfortable, and I understand that. Um, we're also not. Tr we're also trying to be kind of upfront with the town and say we don't want to show you a bunch of public streets, some of which aren't going to happen because these lots aren't going to be all, all built out at an acre. They're going to be combined, and I think that helps you too. Um, if, if for example, you know, instead of these these six lots, that could be one large user, and mm -hmm. you're just doing a service to that one large user. Um, which I, sounds like you prefer, right? So you're not worried about that. Would be that would be easy for us because we'd own the sewer and the main road right. to the property line, and then the then the lot owner would be responsible for the sewer service within his within his parcel. Right. Which is our well, that that's the standard. That's the standard kind of uh, sewer development plan that we right. typically would see. Right. So we also could do. You know, that may happen, and then others, all six lots are built on, and it could be a public dead-end street. Um, and then it's, you know, you'd be comfortable because it'd be in your, in a public, public right away. We try to like to figure out a way to kind of thread the needle and have what you have in terms of confidence, in terms of the association, um, but have that be in a, a private right of way that kind of meets your standards otherwise. You know, the width, the access, the... Um, so that's where we're at, but it's, yeah. you know, it's your decision, so we need to... What is the uh, tipping point for which ones you're going to make public and which ones you're going to make private? So uh, on your con current yeah. plan, I mean, I understand it's kind of hard to figure right, right now because you're hoping for development, right? Yep. So as Dave introduced, this is all proposed to be a public street. Yep. And then this is proposing public street because that's going to connect into the rest of the project. So this is a going to be a public street. The pump station would be here. It would serve this whole area. This would connect down to public streets that go into the rest of the project. Um, these are you know what we're talking about, and um, again, those we're proposing to be privately owned. So there's flexibility as to how these are developed. Maybe you only build up to here, and then there's one site here in one large building versus four lots and four buildings. Um, if it's private, it gives us that kind of flexibility to not build the entire street. Um, sure. So these are all, in, right now, envisioned to be private, um, but designed in a way that kind of meets your standard, meets Port and Water District standard. Most of your standards, recognizing it's not public it's private so are you going to be able to extinguish those private streets without filing an amended subdivision plan down the road in other words if you don't if you sell the whole lot and you don't build those streets does the does doesn't the future owner if he wants to build a large building that crosses that right away doesn't he have to go back anyway and extinguish the right away so he can build on it they have to extinguish the easement yeah so that yeah, would have to go back easement would they have to go back to the planning board to be done um, we're working on that right now in terms of what requires a subdivision plan amendment okay. with the board. We're really, basically, we're, 
we have standard sections for how those all are going to be built if they need to be built, essentially. No, I understand that. I'm just, you're trying to, you're trying to build this so you don't have to keep going back and forth to the planning board to amend the plans, mm -hmm. which, which I understand. <clears throat> but even if you do private streets and you sell, sell all six lots to one developer, one, one client who's going to build, build out the whole parcel, mm -hmm. he's still going to have to go back to the planning board to extinguish the easement for that private way, isn't mm -hmm. he? Yeah, probably just to take the easement off of those lots. Right. Yeah. And eliminate, say, lot lines between the four lots, like you're saying. So nobody would object to that, and we wouldn't object to that. So if those were, if those were public ways, and you decided to sell the whole thing and extinguish the public way, would that process be more involved than what you do for a private way? Probably would. There's a street acceptance process. And, well, yeah. I mean, we haven't figured out all those details. Of, yeah. You know, thinking. Well, I'm, not, I'm I'm trying to kind of stick to what we typically do, but I'm not trying to throw a, I'm not trying to throw a, big problem your right. way as far as the project moving forward. I mean, I'm perfectly happy to provide the sewage and you know approve that, but I, I'm just still uncomfortable with us starting to accept public sewers and private streets. I just, I'm, I'm just having a hard time saying that's a good decision for us to make as a, as a public sewer entity. Could this be the first, John? Yeah. I don't know if it would be the first or not, but there's not many situations when it's happened. I mean, we, we have uh, interceptors that are in private ways, but they're servicing, a, you know, a much other other uh, uh, areas that are, in, are publicly way. You know, so, um, but in this case here, I I can't come up in my mind of any a situation like this. You would have a private sewer, a public sewer in a, in a private way like that. You know, I'm, I think I'm with Charlie on this. You know, if we have a, a leak that we have to dig on one of those private streets and the association wants the whole road paved now, um, I'd be more comfortable if they built it to our standards and that they want to turn the road over and go through that process to the town. Then we can look at accepting it at that point. But I want, uh, it's a project. They want to build it, and we want to be business friendly. But that, this is a slippery slope. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't see any. I guess I don't want to make an impediment here to us approving this, but it seems to me like until this discussion right now, it's kind of been out there that it's an issue, but nobody really has said, okay, let's address it, and resolve it. And we're sitting here tonight, and I'm not sure we can address it or resolve it to everybody's satisfaction. I, I actually think it almost has to be done on an individual street basis, depending on how it gets developed. And I was just wondering if if, if the, we can approve the entire project with the exception of as we turn the streets on, you guys just have to come back and deal with that. Um, I don't think we can put a blanket over the public-private thing at this point. Well, and th this approval, to be clear, does not include that component of it. Uh, there, they have stubs that go to the uh, that services the streets, but they they're capped there. At the intersection of the private, what the private? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So are you happy going forward with our approval of this project without us resolving the public-private issue? I, in the we want to resolve it, but I, I, we want to resolve it for the project, but we're happy moving forward with tonight's uh, motion because you weren't anticipating approval of the quote-unquote private streets. Um, so I think we're hearing what your concerns are, and we can work on... Um, you know, a path forward working with you and, and Dave and, and figure out what that is. Um, it's important for us to kind of get certainty on the public design and the, the public approval. We're going to come back with the pump station design and um, we recognize we need to come back for approval for the, the private streets. And so before we do that, we can have a, a roadmap with you to 
to figure that out. I mean, I, I, think, I think that we could work with you to make some of those public or make some of those private as your development plans move forward and get to a place where you really could get your hands around what's actually going to happen on them on a lot yeah. by lot basis. I, I think I could be open to that and we should be able to come up with some way to work to work through that without making it a huge yeah. a huge issue but um, but I guess I'm not I don't want to not vote to approve this thing tonight because of this pi private street issue so I guess I agreed I've heard enough to think that we could vote on this and leave that on the table and that everybody at least knows it's an issue that can be will be resolved one way or the other, but it won't be a huge shock to you if we say no. We're not going to we're yeah. not going to be responsible for the maintenance of the sewers in the private ways. You you know it's a concern that we have, but it's certainly not a deal breaker for us yeah. to vote no on the project. Agreed. That'd be great. Appreciate it. So on the fourth main. We, we get an easement for the first man that goes over to Hikes Parkway. Is that how it works? Yes. Yeah, that will be an easement. And we're okay with that. Yeah. On that. And what's that? What's it? Yeah, twenty-five yeah. or twenty-five foot easement? Or? Um, we haven't defined it yet. It would probably be more like at least a thirty-foot easement. It's going to have access road through it. Yeah. I notice there's some vernal pools in there. Is that going to be a problem? That crossing it looks like it's mostly I mean, directionally issues. boring. You don't care about those. You don't care about those. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you stay below it in directional bore. But he's talking about putting a roadway <laughs> along it, though. Is it? I, I'm not seeing a roadway along the, uh, in this plan. Yeah, yet. they haven't. It's not fully developed. The route isn't even fully identified. But, I mean, yeah. but they will have to put a roadway along it. We haven't defined it yet. We don't the, know. That. The current alignment is the existing tote road, I tote road, hall road, fire road, has a lot of names. Right. <laughs> the road that went from the gravel pits along Haggis Parkway to create the downs. Um, so there is a, it's actually a, it's an existing road that's, that's drivable. Um, we need to talk about what that kind of looks like with Dave in terms of your access to it. Um, but that's the that's the current alignment. That's our vision has been that it's similar to like the Eastern Trail. Um, it's a it's not going to be a, the road into the project. It's going to be more like a a rec trail that has the ability to, to drive up and down it for emergencies and for maintenance needs that you might have. So it might be gated or. Some kind right. of barricades on it. Right, because we are sensitive to the, the vernal pool is an issue. We don't want to be making that the main access road into the project because that's going to be a much bigger impact on that area of the site. Um, so, but I know we're planning on coming back to, to talk in more detail about that in the pump station design review. Okay. And uh, I did talk to Dave, Dave about. Um, some of the sewer, one of the sewers anyway, next to the pump station, it looks like you're connecting one of the um, lines into the, directly into the, to the uh, um, <coughs> trunk line. Yeah. Without, a, without a manhole. I without may have marked it up on, a, on the sheet you've 208. got. 208? <coughs> yeah, we moved the manhole. Yeah. I hate to do it, but I have one more question. Go ahead. <laughs> it seems to me like when we looked at this plan a while back, that there were some issues with some service connections over or under water mains. Would there were conflicts in places? No. There was, well, there was a conflict that was identified during construction of the first phase of the project that has uh, been resolved. Okay, yeah. been resolved. That's all I want to know. Yeah. Thanks. So we have a motion, right? Yes. Do yes. yeah. you want to amend it something to pick yeah. up the No, I order. think being silent on it, we've discussed it. They're aware of it. We're aware of it. The records will show we it's talked about it. We still need to find I don't think I want to, I don't think I even want to try to address it in a motion. Okay. Any other comments before we pick up the motion? 
All in favor of approval? Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. <laughs> summary, budget summary. Uh, public comments. Uh, no, budget, budget summary. summary. The budget summary. Four month budget summary is including a packet. I recommend approval. So moved. Second. Any comments? Looking okay. Not seeing any. All in favor? Unanimous. Now, public comments. Looks like they <laughs> run out Everybody abandoned us. Trustee comments. We could start with Charlie. Um, <clears throat> thanks, Dave, for the update on the problematic force main on Route 114. Appreciate that. Um, I think that actually happened in our workshop, but uh, I'm glad that you followed through with that. And it's sort of what <clears throat> we anticipate that you'd be doing. Um, and this is hard to believe Memorial Day weekend coming up, so everybody have a safe and happy holiday, and uh, hopefully summer weather's going to arrive sometime soon. <laughs> I have friends who wish they had stayed in Florida. It's, <laughs> it's almost June in May. No kidding. Yeah, I was driving on Route 114 on April 30th, and pouring, pouring rain, and saw our employees digging, fixing that area that you talked about, David, fixing the force main, and um, there they were in the pouring rain, doing a great job. <laughs> so tell them that somebody saw them, appreciated them in the pouring rain. She didn't cuss them out for being out there. Absolutely not. And drive carefully. There's so many people out there distracted driving, so it's going to be a busy, busy roadway through the Memorial Day weekend. Paul? No, thanks. Okay. Joe? I'd uh, just like to wish everybody a happy and safe Memorial Day weekend, and thank you to all of our veterans and those who continue to serve, and of course the staff for all the work they've been doing and doing with the LEAP and, and the construction projects in town. Jason? I'd like to thank Wendy for the snacks tonight. Yes. <laughs> it was a lifesaver. Dinner. And <laughs> safe Dinner. and uh, happy Memorial Day to everybody. Right. I wish everyone a happy Memorial Day. Day weekend, and I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? We're adjourned. Did you get the